During the 18-year history of confrontation, Jeff Bezos has not less than twice sued SpaceX. This even prompted Elon Musk to tweet, Filing legal actions against SpaceX is actually his full-time job. Sadly, you know, you cannot sue your way to the moon. Now Jeff seems to have left that approach and moved on to another strength that the third richest billionaire in the world has. Well, Jeff Bezos spent up to $10 billion to humiliate SpaceX and Elon Musk. Welcome back to Alpha Tech, and we'd like to take time to thank you for your continued support of the channel. Let's grab your favorite beverage and dive into today's most interesting topic. Jeff Bezos and Amazon have just signed their largest commercial launch deal ever to beat SpaceX. They purchased up to 83 launches, including 18 launches of Europe's new Ariane Space Ariane 6 rocket, 12 launches of Blue Origin's new Glenn rocket with options for 15 additional launches, and 38 launches of ULA's Vulcan rocket. These launches will deploy a majority of Amazon's low Earth orbit constellation of broadband satellites. Additionally, Amazon previously announced it had purchased the final nine Atlas V rockets from ULA before that vehicle, which is powered by Russian engines, is retired. Well, do you realize that Bezos and Amazon hired everybody but SpaceX? Furthermore, all rockets on the list have yet to fly. I'm just not sure what benefit Amazon gets from committing to more expensive per-launch unproven vehicles. With this deal, Amazon acquired an extraordinary amount of medium and heavy lift launch capacity over the next five years, procuring launches from every major Western provider except for its direct satellite competitor, SpaceX. Aside from SpaceX, this purchase represents the vast majority of any spare launch capacity for larger rockets in the U.S. or Europe over the next half decade. Amazon plans to launch two prototype satellites in the fourth quarter of 2022. But the company has not set a date for when deployment of its operational constellation will begin, but a spokesperson said that will be shared after the demonstration mission later this year. And according to Dave Limp, Amazon's senior VP for devices and services, these launch agreements reflect our incredible commitment and belief in Project Cooper, and we're proud to be working with such an impressive lineup of partners to deliver on our mission. This is a hugely consequential deal with a myriad of implications for the space industry. While Amazon officials would not talk about cost, Amazon is likely paying at least $10 billion for these launches. This is a giant pot of money for the commercial launch industry. The question is, why Bezos and Amazon would rather launch on imaginary rockets with expensive cost instead of the world's most cost-effective available launch provider, SpaceX? In building out its Project Cooper constellation, Amazon is just going head-to-head -head with SpaceX and its Starlink constellation. Based on the timing of its first launches, Amazon is running about four years behind SpaceX. Amazon's also behind SpaceX because it doesn't have its own rocket, and no one in the industry can compete with SpaceX's Falcon 9 on price or launch cadence. The Falcon 9 rocket could launch as many as 60 times this year, and because SpaceX can reuse the first stage and payload fairing, the internal cost per launch is probably substantially less than $30 million. Amazon is likely paying, on average, at least three times as much per launch. Whether Amazon simply chose to avoid SpaceX or SpaceX said, thanks but no thanks, well, that's unclear. But the former seems more likely as SpaceX is working toward another satellite competitor, OneWeb. So the possibility of them refusing is not great. Either way, by using other providers, Amazon is assuming risk. None of the three rockets they've chosen has proven itself in flight. Both the Ariane 6 and Vulcan rockets are probably about plus or minus 12 months away from making debut flights. While New Glenn is probably at least two years away from its first flight, Amazon is asking for a lot of these rockets. The company wants them to reach a high flight cadence during the mid-2020s in order to compete with both existing Manifest and the additional Project Cooper missions. For example, the Ariane 6 rocket was planned for six to nine launches a year, but with the Soyuz vehicle off the market for European satellites, it'll now carry additional demand. How quickly will the Ariane 6 be able to accommodate three or more annual missions from Amazon? And at the same time, this is a huge shot in the arm to SpaceX's primary Western launch competitors. The Falcon 9 rocket had already peeled away a substantial number of commercial launches from Ariane Space and dozens of military and NASA launches from ULA. Now Jeff Bezos has showered these launch providers with cash as they scramble to compete with Elon Musk. 
It'll be fun to see which of these companies can execute their new rocket in the coming years and quickly reach a high flight cadence. The safe bet is not all three will make it. And obviously, Bezos is also betting big on his BE-4, not only for New Glenn, but for Blue Origin, who's also building the BE-4 engine to power the Vulcan rocket. That means that 78% of the launches Amazon is buying will fly on Blue Origin engines. That's definitely not a small number of engines to build. What's more, Blue Origin has yet to produce a flight-ready BE-4 rocket engine. Although the company will probably deliver the first two to ULA in the near future, as Tori Bruno just revealed this week, no one is sure everything will work out on time, especially given that their FCC approval requires Cooper to launch and operate 50% of its satellites no later than July 30th, 2026, and Cooper must launch the remaining space stations necessary to complete the authorized service constellation, place them in their assigned orbits, and operate each of them in accordance with the authorization no later than July 30th, 2029. Clock's ticking, Jeff. What's the over-under on launches with BE-4 till mid-2026? Well, committing so many utopias wouldn't have happened if their owner's name didn't start with a B and end in Azos. This big announcement was also a piece of bad news for small launch providers. Previously, Amazon announced a multi-launch deal with ABL Space, which is developing the small RS-1 rocket for its Project Cooper satellites. However, any additional deals with small launch companies were noticeably absent from the blockbuster announcement. The problem is that as small launch companies have gone public through special purpose acquisition companies, they've sold investors on playing a role in mega constellations. However, all Starlink satellites are launching on the Falcon 9 rocket. OneWeb so far has flown the vast majority of its satellites on Soyuz rockets and will soon switch to the Falcon 9. And the last major Western mega constellation, Project Cooper, seems to have indicated a clear preference for larger rockets. That truly is not good news for the small launch companies. I feel sorry for Rocket Lab. If they had been another year or two ahead with Neutron, they probably would have been on the list as well. Well, that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section. Everyone supports motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.